Uh, back uh, in 2008, I started a blog that was called, like you said, Catching Days, uh, based on the quote by Annie Dillard, how we spend our lives, how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. And I've just always loved this idea of realizing that this day, this moment, you know, this is my life. It's happening now. It's not something in the future. It's right this second talking to you on this podcast. This is it. And uh, so uh, I also wanted to have um, guest writers on and I wanted some something particular. I didn't want to just say, come on and write whatever you want. I wanted to have something special. And when I was, uh, the first 20 years of my life were all French all the time. And I uh, used to read Elle magazine and Elle magazine had, I don't know if it still does, had a uh, feature on uh, a day in the life of a woman. And every time I bought the magazine, that's what I would read first. So it occurred to me with my focus on days um, in the uh, days in lives that I could ask a writer to write about their day. So in 2009, I started on the first of each month inviting a writer to write about their day. And so now at this point, I don't really have a blog anymore, but there's a tab on my website and that it features the How We Spend Our Days series. And I have over a decade of essays by writers on their lives, and it's still going. I published uh, one yesterday, uh, Rachel Swearingen wrote. And now, since, um, since January, it's also available on Substack. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. I have a, another amazing author with me today. I get to talk to some of the most unique and amazing authors by having this podcast, and it makes me so happy to to reach out and talk to more people. And so Cynthia Newberry Martin is here with me today. Cynthia Newberry Martin.com is where you can find all the goodness we're talking about today. I have the website open as we chat. Cynthia's a great author, lots of stuff happening, and a big book tour I'd like to talk about as well. But Cynthia, welcome to the podcast. Nice to have you on Living the Next Chapter. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's nice to be here. It's exciting to meet new authors for me. I this is like a joy for me because I get to Go behind the scenes. I see your books online and I, I read the reviews, but now I get to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. And I know for the audience that are listening, it's a great opportunity to get to know you as an author. And then when we go to the website to purchase a book, we feel like we already know you and uh, it, it adds another level to reading your books. And I really appreciate you giving us your time today. Thank you for doing this. It's nice to be here. It's nice to talk about all this. See? <laughs> Great. Okay, so let's start with this. I'd like to start here. Where are you in our great, big, wonderful world? I am in Columbus, Georgia, which is uh, about an hour and a half southwest of Atlanta. It's right on the Chattahoochee on mm -hmm. the Alabama border. It's If anyone out there has read Carson McCullers' The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, which is a classic, this is where she wrote it at age 23. So Wow. It's so, a literary town. There you go. There's some history there. I love that. Now, when I'm talking to you on camera, behind you is a wall of books. Now, you have read every single word of every book behind you. Is this correct? Pretty much, yes. There you go. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Because <laughs> sometimes I meet people with Zoom backgrounds, and this is not a Zoom background. That's a lot of books behind you. So that's a good indication. Um, I think that's one thing we need is more books and less televisions, I think, would be a big thing for me. Yes, I agree. I'm trying to institute a five o'clock reading hour. And uh, so I'm, that's what I'm working on. Take a pause, pick up a book, put your feet up. Some days it works, not every day. Yeah. So as, a, as an avid reader, what kind of things do you like to read? What's your go-to? Well, I love Ellen Gilchrist, uh, but she's I don't think she's writing anymore. Uh, recent favorites. Uh, let's see. I loved Rebecca, Rebecca Mackay's new book. Uh, I have some questions for you. Uh, there was a wonderful book I just read that uh, is published by Feminist Press by Cassandra Lane. It's called We Are Bridges. 
And it's a memoir uh, that she wrote about her family. But there's only so much that she knows. And her her great, it's either her great grandfather or her, I think it was her great grandfather was lynched. And that was her starting point to find out as much as she could about that. And so at certain points, then the memoir veers into imagination. Mm. But uh, it's it's based in fact, and it's all we have. And so it's just it's it's a wonderful book. I highly recommend it. So what do you what kind of authors inspire you is and what what about them inspires you? Um, like is it their writing style? Is it how they approach their craft? What kind of things when you when you find a great author, you're like like a great song that we talked about before we hit record with with uh, Emily James. What's about an author that you're just like, oh, that oh, there's something about them that I love. What? It has to be uh, language, the okay. way they write. That's the most, I have to say, that's the most important thing to me. I will follow a writer uh, anywhere who writes good sentences with lots of details and uh, a writer who cares uh, as much about how the story is told as the story itself. So uh, I love uh, books by Pam Houston. Um, and it's just, uh, I love stories of, of women's lives. And I don't mean, um, I don't mean it has to be, uh, let's see, how to, how to say it. Uh, I just, it fascinates me, all the different lives that women lead. And so I will follow, uh, I will follow stories anywhere that, that talk about how a woman is living. And before we have record, we talked about uh, Emily James and the song Brooklyn. And there's something, there's a line in that song that really, that really speaks to you and the power of, um, you can, you can visualize the words as they come across. I know it's in song form, but again, it's still writing, right? So what is it about that song in particular that really stands out to you? Uh, it's so interesting because, as I mentioned, I'm not really, it's so weird being a writer and not having lyrics be the most important thing. But I go to music to take me kind of away to a different place. And But in this song that you're talking about, Brooklyn by Emily James, there's a line that she says, fourth floor walk up. And it just does so much for me. That one detail in that song, uh, it really makes the whole song come alive. Right. And that's the key, I guess, to writing is how do you approach that as an author in with your with your reader in mind to take them somewhere, right? Because when we when we start with the page one of a book, we we have really no idea where we're going and you have to build the whole world for us. So what kind of things do you try to put into your writing that are like that fourth floor walk up moment in your book? What do you do? It's it's all in the details. Okay. And uh, so especially on a first draft, I am reaching for all kinds of details and describing things. Now, not everything makes it into the final draft, but for example, in, in Love Like This that was just published, there is a cup and I have it. Uh, I'll show you. The oh. listeners won't be able to see it, but I will just grab it. And uh, it's a it's a mug that my daughter gave me. And it was uh, made by uh, a kid in a hospital and the proceeds oh. went to the hospital. And so when I was uh, and there's a scene in my novel where uh, the main character, Angelina, is what? First, she gives this mug to a friend, but then there's a scene where she's actually washing it carefully. Uh, and, you know, you can see there's a ladybug here. And mm -hmm. I think I changed that to a butterfly for the story. But the, the just the how it feels in your hand, the solidness, the raised flower, the color yeah. of it. And it can uh, the reader, if you if you describe each of the details and it really I think it comes alive for the. For the reader, I was at a an event recently where um, where the other writer I was with chose that passage 
where Angelina is washing that mug to read as one of her favorite moments in the whole book. So it's it's weird about the details. <laughs> so was that a happenstance situation where the mug just was there when you were writing or was that in your mind before you started writing? How did that happen? Well, it it's always meant something to me. The yeah. fact that a little kid in the hospital uh, who was, you know, in, a, in the hospital for an extended period of time made this mug. Mm -hmm. And so I've kept it. Right. Yeah. So obviously it meant something to me. Right. And so it was, in fact, sitting on my desk when I was writing. So mm -hmm. I don't know what, you know, measure of happenstance and um uh, you know, imagination and what was happening in the story came together. But that's that's I don't feel like I am. Uh, I write fiction. So but yet I don't feel like I am um, making things up. I feel like it's more all around me is clay mm. and I'm just molding the clay like, uh, you know, whatever the weather, the leaves bouncing in the wind outside my window, the way the sunlight is falling through the woods. <clears throat> you know, a stupid, uh, what do you call those things that blow, a leaf blower outside can be, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. there's just no telling because all of those things will, uh, if they happen to a character in your story, can bring out that character's personality. Right. But I don't feel like I'm just making stuff up. I feel like I'm reaching for things. Yeah. So is there a pro is there a point where you get into too much detail and you kind of feel drowning a little bit as an author and you got to like back away? Like, okay, that's getting really deep now. Sure. And that's revision. I throw it all in there at the beginning and, you know, some of it lands and some of it doesn't. And, uh, I can't think of an example right off the bat, but absolutely you can have too much detail. And uh, but I try to it's it's a lot easier to see what works after it's in there. OK, so again, while we're then, talking, I have. Yeah, yeah, while we're talking, I have your website up and I'm looking at the books. I'm looking at the website. It's beautiful, by the way. Everyone should go there and uh, mm -hmm. check out the website. Uh, Cynthia Newberry Martin dot com. It's great. Uh, the books are listed. There's three of them I see on the screen. Can you walk us through maybe the books in order and give us kind of an overview of, of what you've written to date? Sure. So three books. Uh, and I think I will start with The Art of Her, Her Life, which is, <clears throat> which is a story about Emily. At nine years old, she falls in love with a painting by Matisse called Breakfast. And when the novel opens, she is a single mother uh, living in the world of art, but she's lost the thread of her life. Uh, she has two daughters, and she's also in a relationship with a guy named Mark, but she's kind of here, there, and everywhere. And she feels a pull between uh, Matisse and the world of art and her family. But a contest at the museum gives her hope. She will. She's hoping to see the painting Breakfast again. Uh, Matisse's words and paintings are a part of this novel. They kind of uh, occupy her days and her nights. And kind of about a third of the way in, she has a note card of this painting that she loves, and she picks it up. And in that moment, for the first time, she sees something she's never seen before. And so this, the novel is about the power of art uh, to change and transform an ordinary life. So that's Beautiful. one. Beautiful. And yeah. that book will be available June 6th. And uh, the second book uh, of the three is uh, Tidal Flats. And that book is about a young couple, uh, about uh, two people who want different things from life, but want a life together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cass wants a husband who comes home at night, but Ethan's job takes him to Afghanistan, often for weeks at a time. And Ethan wants children, but Cass does not. They reach an agreement. 
Ethan will continue going back and forth to Afghanistan for three years. And at the end of that time, he'll come home whether Cass wants children or not. And the novel opens nine weeks before he's supposed to be home for good. And it's clear from the very beginning uh, that it's unclear whether or not that's going to (laughs) happen. It's clear that it's unclear. I like that. Yes. And the and the third novel of the three is the one that I was just talking about, Love Like This, which is which came out um, a month ago. And uh, it's about an older couple. Uh, they've been married 22 years. Uh, well, they've been married actually maybe 24 years, but they've had children at home for 22 years. And Angelina has no idea what she wants. And she's hoping that the empty house will help her figure it out. But her husband, Will, knows exactly what he wants. He wants her all to himself. And nine days into their child-free life, he arrives home, comes in through the door in the kitchen, and says he's been fired. And so love like this drops the reader inside this long-term marriage and uh, then asks them to uh, weigh the value in sticking with the familiar or venturing into the unknown. Mm, I think there's a lot of people who can identify with that right now. That's amazing. I love it. And the one thing I love too, looking at your website, Cynthia, is looking at the covers for each of your books. They're just, they're gorgeous. Can you talk a little bit about the power of and the importance of a good cover to your book? Because I'm thinking as I walk through my local bookstore, I see displays of books everywhere and there's got to be something that catches your eye or brings you to the book because again, people are going to see your book before they read it. In most cases, talk about a little bit about your covers uh, specific to your books and just the importance as an author to, to present a good cover for your book. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, thank you for asking. I'm glad you like the covers and thank you for asking the, the um, I have always been a reader and I have often judged a book by its cover. It's cover, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because just exactly what you said. I mean, you're walking through a bookstore and uh, you can't pick up every book. So which ones do you pick up? It's the ones with cover that's covers that speak to you. And I was really lucky with uh, Title Flats, which is the, the story of the younger couple in um, Afghanistan. And that book uh, was published by an independent press, and uh, we we went back and forth with a cover. They had a cover designer, and we just couldn't really find a cover that we loved. And my editor said, you know what we need? We need some millennials. And I said, well, I have millennials. Lots of them grew up, four of them grew up in this house. Yeah. And uh, one of them, my son Jack, is a graphic designer, and he designed the uh he stayed up all night and uh sent us about eight designs and we picked the one we liked best and then my editor took the best cover we did have and Jack's cover and took them to Ingram which is a company that gets the books in all the bookstores and let Ingram choose and they chose Jack's design so my son Jack designed the cover for my First published book, Title Flats, uh, and that was very exciting. Nice. And uh, yeah, and then uh, the second book, Love Like This, that came out uh, a month ago. Uh, the is published by another independent press, and the head of the press, uh, Jessica Bell, is a uh, is a book cover designer. That's her thing. And so she asked for some suggestions and I gave her, you know, that cover of the Queen album, Hot Space with the four, the like the Andy Warhol cover. Yeah, yeah. So I said that for my, that was my kind of idea because we use a song from, I use a song from that in the novel. And, uh, and so she came back with this bold cover that is, uh, has got, uh, uh, it's got, blue and red and yellow and purple on the front and it's a black background and it's just it's a very bold exciting cover and uh and so I love that so that that's nice 
And with with each, there are four main characters in this book. And what we did, each one of them has kind of a something that stands uh, in for them. Like one of mm-hmm. one of them is a squirrel. The four icons on the cover of the book are a squirrel, a bear, um, a bird, and oddly enough, a house. And uh, you're just going to have to trust me that that works together. <laughs> and uh, good. Every she, every she kept saying, um, you know, don't you have another animal? And I said, nope, nope, it's a house. Unquestionably, the fourth one is a house. So yes. that's that. And then the uh, the cover of the Art of Her Life, the Matisse book, which is coming out in June, also was created um, by my son Jack, and he took a um, he took the Matisse painting that Emily loves in the book, which is called Breakfast. And he did a kind of a, a digital updated version of it. So, hmm. you know, like poems are often written uh, to honor a particular poet. You'll read a poem that's after Wordsworth or after Emily Dickinson. And this is yeah. this is called this is um, after Henri Matisse. So. Nice. It's beautiful. After his after his painting, the breakfast. So I hope you paid your son with handsomely for all of his great work. This is beautiful, <laughs> by the way. Many cookies or something extra along the line from mom. So um, an extra Christmas present under the tree, something like that. That's but it's really really well done. So compliments. So your book is kind of the afterthought or maybe at the end of writing for you. Did you have a vision in your mind of what your book would look like as you're writing it? Or did you wait till the end to give us an insight on that? The only book that I ever thought about the cover ahead of time was The Art of Her Life, the Matisse book. And I always thought it would have some version of the painting that Emily loves, nice. uh, which is called Breakfast on the cover. And so that turned out to be true. So that's pretty exciting. I love it. I, I, see, that's the kind of information I love when I'm on the website now and I know the story behind it. I see the red house on love like this, red and black, and I'm like, what's that? So it's it, it creates <laughs> some some uh, some in, intrigue for me as a reader to be like, what is this all about? So I love that. I love it. Okay, so... We have new authors that are listening to our conversation today, Cynthia. They are at the very beginning stage of writing. They love reading. They love music. They, they're, they're really identifying with you as an author and getting some inspiration from our conversation. What kind of words of wisdom or guidance would you offer up to a room full of new authors gathered to, to hear you speak on, on the writing process? What kind of words of wisdom could you offer to somebody new to the game? Well, uh, I would say uh, to uh, to not give up, to plan for it to take uh, the time it takes. The, the Art of Her Life, which is the book we were just talking about, uh, actually, that was the first book I ever started writing. And uh, I came right out of the shoot wanting to write a novel because that's what I love to read. So I don't know if your listeners are coming to writing from that standpoint as readers or coming as as always having wanted to be a writer. But in either case, uh, uh, it takes it takes a while. It's not something for most people from everything's a, for most people. It takes a while. And uh, I hope that they all love the process because that's what kept me going for 20 years. I actually wrote for 20 years. I wrote four novels in 20 years, but I didn't have any of them published until after that time period. Hmm. So um, I love the process though. And um, uh, sitting down to write, uh, getting the words on the page, getting closer and closer to the way I wanted to tell the story. Uh, And I actually don't think I was skilled enough as a writer to tell the Matisse story until just recently. So 
well, I wish it could have been published years ago. I'm happy that it took, you know, that I, I waited and um, was able to, to, uh, to publish it when I could do it, <laughs> when I could write a little bit better, I guess is the way to say it. Uh, and uh, the other thing I would say is to, uh, if you're just starting out, to find a community of writers, find yeah. people, uh, mentors, yes, but also people just like you, people starting out, people writing, either that you can um, talk to about writing or that you can just be writers together. You know, a community of writers is so great because it's the one place you don't have to prove it. It's the one place you, you can just be a writer. Uh, it's not about whether your story was accepted for publication or you have an agent or anything else. You can just, in the, in a community, you can just uh, exist and be be yourself as a writer. And that's really important for the years and years it takes to uh, uh, to to become, uh, you know, the writer you want to be. So I would say that uh, enjoy the process and find a community, whether it's a podcast community, uh, an MFA community, a writing group, anything like that. There are all sorts of ways or, you know, find a conference that you like going to and go regularly. Your local independent bookstore, be a regular, go to events, meet authors. It's cool. And it'll help you feel and uh, become the writer you want to be. So that's what I would say. This kind of feels like we've set up the next question, and I love this. <laughs> uh, you are on a book tour doing exactly what you just said to do. Uh, you're out there in bookstores, and you're going state by state. This is exciting to hear about. And we're all coming out of this interesting time in our global history where everybody was inside, locked away. Now we're out doing this again. Talk about, about your, your book tour and give us an update. Where have you been? Where are you going as a at the time of recording? We'd love to kind of talk about this. It's exciting. Sure. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, the book tour is awesome. Uh, when, I was, uh, when I was waiting for Love Like This to be published, I found out that The Art of Her Life would also be published. And so I thought, well, I want to do something really exciting to celebrate all these books finally coming out. I've got a lot of celebrating to catch up on is what I yeah. was thinking. And so I thought, well, I love traveling. Uh, I love uh, reading and writing and traveling. And so I was thinking uh, all of my books are pu published by independent presses, which is exciting because these are presses that really love these books. I mean, Independent presses, for the most part, publish books they love without regard to whether they're going to be bestsellers or not. And uh, but they often don't have the funds to get the word out about the books. So uh, it's hard for readers to find them. So I thought, well, I'm going to just maybe try to find a bookstore in every state to visit, to try to uh tell people about these books published by independent presses. And to further that, um, you know, I thought, well, who's going to come see me at a bookstore in Idaho because I don't know anybody in Idaho. Mm -hmm. So then I thought I would join with a local writer. And then I thought, well, I'll join with a local writer of another independently uh, published book. And uh, that way we can help get the word out. And I tell you what, it's just um, been amazing. I've read uh, a book uh, by an author in each state that I've been to. Uh, and the book has been published by an independent press. And these are books that, for the most part, I had never heard of until I went looking for an author in that state. And uh, so it's cool bookstores that I've always heard heard about or that somebody says, oh, you have to go to this bookstore. And um, and so I write it down. And for example, I've at this point, I started not quite a year ago, maybe 10, nine or 10 months ago on this tour. And I have been to uh, 14 states so far. Nice. And I'll, yeah, I'll be going to, uh, in just a week, I'll be at in Vermont 
for state number 15. And the Vermont bookstore, the Norwich bookstore, is in a little town in Vermont, Norwich, Vermont. But a friend of mine said, I love my local bookstore. And so I thought, well, those are the kind of bookstores I want to come visit and see and walk around on their creaky floors and pull books from their shelves. And And the smell of a bookstore. Yes. 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 So it's great. So do you have all of your bookstores lined up for all 50 states? Are you still in process? Where where are you at with that? Um, It's a total process. And uh, I have started conversations with probably around 10 other bookstores in different states at the moment. And uh, so I'm just, I'm just, it's a, it's a, it's a time consuming process, but it's one that I love and it's interactions with the bookstore owners and booksellers and reading the, finding the authors in the States and reading their books. And we have a, excuse me, we have a very cool format that we use where I choose a favorite passage from the book of the author that I'm joining with to read out loud. Yeah, Yeah. it's really cool. And then I say why I chose that. And the author I'm joining with does the same thing. All of this to say, I'm trying not to race through this. I'm trying to enjoy uh, each event. For example, when I went to the bookstore in Montana, um, Fact and Fiction in Missoula, uh, I my husband went with me and we took a week uh, because we'd never been to Montana. And so uh, that was really fun. Uh, so it's a uh, it's I'm trying to not I'm trying to enjoy, like I said, the process of reading the book, getting to know the writer, getting to know the bookstore and the place I'm going. So I have no idea how long it's going to take me to do this <laughs> <laughs> because people are going to be listening to this episode like in, in the near future, but also off in the future as well. And so can they follow along on your journey on the website? Like, how do they know where you're going to be next? And communicate, and how do you communicate with your audience about the plans for the for the tour? Uh, yeah, I share um, I share on social social media, but yes, on my website there are two places you can go to find information. If you just want to see what's happening with the tour and what state number I'm on, you can. There's a tab called Fifty Bookstores, and just click on that, and right up at the top you can see current total of fourteen bookstores and states. And uh, then if you just want to know my next event, there's uh, under the tab these days, you can see events and you can see where I'll be next. Awesome. And but, if I'm uh, a... yeah, I was okay. just going to say that on the, on the 50 bookstores page, it's by st- it's organized by state. And so you can go down in alphabetical order. And like if you're wondering if you're sitting in Kansas right now and you're wondering if I've been there yet, you can go down and you'll see that there's nothing for Kansas. So you can email me and say, you have to come to this very cool bookstore we have here. And then that will get the process started. And I also show a picture of all the covers uh, yes. on that the, the cover of uh, the book of the author who's joining me and who published their book and um, what bookstore and all of that kind of information. I love your approach to this, Cynthia. This is great. Like I'm on the page as you're talking and I see the books side by side. And it's, I love that you're not just there to promote your book, but you're there to promote the bookstore, which is great. Thank you for doing that. And another author. What a great combination. I love, it's a great event. Great idea. It's really, it's really fun. And I like, we also take a moment at the beginning of the events to, to look around us in the bookstore and to thank the bookstore owners and to just take a moment to realize that where we're sitting didn't happen, you know, on its own, that somebody had to want to create this spot where we could all get together and talk about books so it's just really a fun experience. So if I'm a book, small bookstore owner that you haven't been to in my state yet, or an author in a state that you haven't been to yet, can I reach out to you through your website and put my hand up and say, I would love to host you or connect with you? Is that possible? Please do. That would be awesome. 
There you go. So it's right, right there. And the link will be in the show notes to do that. So again, I don't see anything in Canada where I am. So you are always welcome <laughs> up here in Canada. Please come. Please come anytime. Um, but for those U.S. listeners, and we have a lot that listen to the podcast. Authors, bookstores, they're listening to you right now. So maybe we can be part of that journey to connect the dots and have you arrive at some amazing location in the future. That's right. And I will come to Canada. I love Canada. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I'll be in the audience for sure. So the other part to all this is you're doing a blog. Another exciting thing that you're doing on top of everything else you're doing. Oh, my gosh. I have so much going on. Um, let's talk about Catching Day's blog. Um, can you give us an idea about this? Another exciting thing you're working on as well. Sure. Um, uh, back uh, in 2008, I started a blog that was called, like you said, Catching Days, uh, based on the quote by Annie Dillard, how we spend our lives, how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. Yeah. And I've just always loved this idea of realizing that this day, this moment, you know, this is my life. It's happening now. It's not something in the future. It's right this second talking to you on this podcast. This is it. And uh, so uh, I also wanted to have um, guest writers on and I wanted some something particular. I didn't want to just say, come on and write whatever you want. I wanted to have something special. And when I was uh, the first 20 years of my life, were all French all the time. And I uh, used to read Elle magazine and Elle magazine had I don't know if it still does, had a. uh feature on uh, a day in the life of a woman. And every time I bought the magazine, that's what I would read first. So it occurred to me with my focus on days um, in the uh, days in lives that I could ask a writer to write about their day. So in 2009, I started on the first of each month inviting a writer to write about their day. And so now at this point, I don't really have a blog anymore, but there's a tab on my website and that it features the How We Spend Our Days series. Mm. And I have over a decade of essays by writers on their lives and it's still going. I published uh, one yesterday, uh, Rachel Swearingen wrote. And now since, um, since January, it's also available on Substack. Nice. Okay. <laughs> wow. Like that's a lot of content. That's a lot. That's a big library to go back in time and read through. Um, talk about who who is coming to that. Who who is your target audience for the blog when it was active and, and even while it's being still produced today? Uh, just writers and readers both. Like if okay. you if you are a reader and you read a great book by. Um, <clears throat> Cynthia Martin, <laughs> Becca Mackay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for yeah, example. Yeah. Um, you can uh, you can uh, go to the website and put her name in the search button, and if she has written, <clears throat> excuse me, about her day, that will pop up. And she has, in fact, written about her day. I think she wrote about her day back in two thousand nine, if I'm remembering. Although I don't, I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, and also at the bottom of that page, there's a list, a link to all the authors. And so I've got an index where you can either see authors who have written recently, or it's, it's organized alphabetical by first name. And you can go down and see all the different writers who have, um, who have written about their day. It's wow. really lots of fun. And I, I start, I try to invite um, seasoned uh, writers as well as debut writers or writers who don't even have a book out yet, just so that because of the way the internet works, you know, if you come looking for one writer, you might happen upon another writer. And it's just kind of this like web uh, of, of writers. And so I'm hoping that, you know, one writer leads to another writer leads to another writer. Nice. So we're jumping back to your book tour again. Another question just came to mind. If I'm a new author, my book is published and I'm thinking about doing an in-store 
event at my local bookstore with your experience with uh, 14, 15 different stores so far behind you. Um, any things that you've learned about doing a, a, an effective um, event in a local bookstore? Any kind of things we should think about? Well, reaching out to anyone you know in the area, um, finding someone in the area who can help you get the word out about the event, that's great. Uh, spending time in the bookstore, um, making sure you can get there on time. <laughs> I yeah. had a horrible experience <laughs> for New Mexico. My Uber canceled on me. And so that was that was the only event I was late to. It just happened recently. Oh, wow. uh, everybody went patiently. That was nice. Uh, so uh, let's see advice. I mean, oh, I, I, I think the biggest advice uh, I would say was, would be join with someone. Uh, I did for title flats, my first book, I did a lot of events just by myself. And now with the focus be on being on joining with someone else, it just opened. the. It's like the world has cracked open. It's so much more fun to, to do an event with someone else than to do it by myself. And uh, so that, I think that would be the, and getting to know the booksellers, that's the other thing. They're awesome. They, their work, most of them are working in these bookstores because they love what they do. Right. And they're so nice to talk to. Um, so, yeah. Okay. For a, Let's flip it around then. For a bookstore owner listening to this and they've never really thought of or done a good job of promoting these in-store events, what kind of benefit to them would it be to, to host this in their store, the little mom and pop uh, bookstore? What would you say to them? Well, it brings readers in, uh, and that's, you know, something that I think is still, um, we're still trying to get that back after the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, people are still hesitant. We got so used to ordering books, um, even if we were ordering from independent bookstores, uh, we got used to ordering rather than, I mean, that's for everything, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, yeah. Food and, <laughs> and clothes and everything. Um, <clears throat> but there's so much magic that can happen during an in-person event. It's amazing. The An audience member asks a question uh, and it just sparks uh, all sorts of things that <clears throat> it's like, it's like something rises up during an in-person event that can't quite come out of your computer screen. Yeah. So if you're lucky enough to be able to go to an in-person event, uh, I mean, the inspiration is everywhere. It's happening. It happens to the audience members, uh, to the writers themselves. Uh, there's just a certain magic from the, you know, just being in the bookstore and all those books. And you imagine the characters peering out over the tops of the spines, right. looking down to see who's there. I mean, it's just magical being in a bookstore and being in a bookstore and talking to other people about books uh, just magnifies the magic. So, for so the next, I highly yeah. recommend it. I love it. I love it. And for the next <laughs> event, when you come out to, to see Cynthia, bring your own mug, your own special <laughs> mug. Bring it along with you and compare. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> then you have a chance to talk about your own mug and how special that is. Um, so before, I have one more question for you, Cynthia. But before I ask that question, again, uh, I have the website in front of me. Talk about the website and maybe where you're most active on social media, where people can follow along on the journey. Sure. Um, so the website uh, is uh, designed, you'll, you'll notice that it's it opens with a photo that I took of Provincetown. Where, Beautiful. Uh, yeah. And that's intentional because uh, I had, I worked, I, I wrote for a long time before a book was published. And I did pretty good with that, but I did have a low moment back in 2014 when I um, when I couldn't really speak about what was happening to me, that I was working so hard on writing a novel and getting a novel published, but it wasn't happening. And so I took a year where I wrote one true thing about myself every day to try to build back 
my confidence that I was more than just a writer who hadn't published a book. And I did discover that it worked. I I got all my confidence back. So the intentional part about the website is that I didn't want to just open with books on the first page because truly I am more than my books. I'm the I'm the books, the book tour, the how we spend our days, you know, the about me page, all of that is me. And so I didn't want to single out just the books to open with. Nice. And then on social media, uh, I'm I'm active on Facebook and Instagram and still a little bit on Twitter. And you can find me in all of those places. Uh, was there, did you ask me something else too? Yeah, I was going to close off with a question that I thought just, I haven't actually asked any other authors this question oh, before, okay. but um, is there any kind of uh, popular advice or things that you've heard in the space for authors that maybe you've tried or you've avoided and you're like, it didn't really work for me as an author. Is there anything that's really popular that maybe some people would be like, nah, you know, that just didn't work for me as an author? What springs to mind immediately is uh, is writing by hand. Uh, okay. I <clears throat> I am a lot of people like that. And, and a lot of people encourage writers to do that. But for me, it doesn't work because I am so freaking left brain, or I was when I started writing, that I would be writing uh, longhand. And before I would get to the en end of the sentence, I was editing and revising the beginning of the sentence. Hmm. So writing longhand did not allow me to get myself on the page. And I was lucky enough to figure out that typing on a computer happens so fast that I can absolutely kind of disassociate and let the words hit the screen without, uh, you know, editing or uh, revising. And so that's really useful for getting a first draft down, I think. And uh, so... I have worked on my um, allowing my right brain to grow and uh, my left brain to shrink. So I do other things also, like I don't outline uh, because that encourages my left brain. Mm. And, you know, I mean, some people love outlining, but I uh, I don't because uh I, I'm a master at outlining. I can outline the heck out of anything. And uh, that would just take all the life and the fun and the spark out of everything. So uh, Love Like This, in fact, was the, the third novel I wrote. And that's the novel where my left brain, where my right brain finally, I think, got as big as my left brain. And, mm -hmm. and things were happening like... I would walk away from my desk and that's when my subconscious would take over and say, my gosh, I'm so glad you put your fingers away and stop typing on that computer. Even, I mean, this is a level beyond the typing. It was just in the shower on a walk. Uh, the story was uh, coming to me. So, yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> everyone, Cynthia New Newberry Martin.com is the website. We'll have links in the show notes to go there. Um, you are an amazing guest on the show. Thank you for taking us behind the pen and behind the keyboard and giving us a sense of, of your writing, showing us the mug that inspires you. And, you know, it's, it's so cool to, to have time with, with another great author. And I really do appreciate you making time for us. Thank you for being on Living the Next Chapter. Oh, thank you. The thanks go to you for having me on here and taking the time to ask these questions. I appreciate it. Awesome. And as, as you do your travels, as you go hit the road and you meet all these other great authors, please keep us in mind. We would love to promote them just like you're doing in a very practical way. We would love to promote them here on the podcast. So you're a great example of what we want to do with our podcast. You're doing it in bookstores across the U.S. I think it's it's an amazing and a stellar idea that many authors should follow as, as you take the lead. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing and following. And 
you're listening this far in the podcast, so you are my best friend. I'm sorry, but you are now my best friend. So welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Uh, LivingTheNextChapter.com has a link on the website to our Facebook group. Are you on Facebook? Probably. Uh, you can go there and you can actually interact with our guests. You can talk to them. You can see hear more about their journey, about their books. You can speak to them directly. You don't need me. You can come right over to LivingTheNextChapter.com. Click on our Facebook link to our community. You can talk to other listeners of the podcast from around the world who are on Facebook. And, again, speak with our guests. Don't you want to speak to the guests you just heard from? Yeah, you can do that on Living the Next Chapter. Go over there. There's links to our Facebook group. And you're welcome to join. Thanks for listening. MindShift Power Podcast, the podcast for teenagers and those who work with them. There's a huge problem in America today. There's a very large disconnect between teenagers and the adults who work with them. I'm looking to bridge that gap with real, raw, honest conversation, not held back by the chains of political correctness. You cannot solve a problem you do not understand. Want to understand teenagers today? Listen to this podcast. This podcast is for teens in the U.S. and Canada. To learn more, go to FatimaBay.com slash podcast, or just look for MindShift Power Podcast on any listening platform. I look forward to you being a faithful listener.